In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for yet another day. God, there are so many that did not make it to see uh, this day. Yes. And God, there are some that had just made it into the day, and, and you said, come hither. Yes. Amen. It is appointed unto man to die once, but after this, the judgment. And God, we know your word is true. We know your judgment is just. And we thank you, God. So many, as we have said, that did not make it into the day, did not make it to see this day. But God, you kept your arms of protection around us, and you spoke to us this morning, and you told these old bodies to get up. Yes. Amen. And we thank you for it, oh God. And, and now, God, we ask you to open spiritual minds and spiritual ears, and open up spiritual hearts to understand your word, oh God. These uh, blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, thank God, thank God. and amen. Amen, amen. amen. You may have your seats. Yeah. Amen. I am so glad I'm saved. Yes. Amen. Like I said last week, I'm not much of a singer, but I would love to, if I could, sing that song, I'm so glad I'm saved. But I'm afraid if I do, some of you going to flip me off because you don't want to hear this old fella trying to hum. Amen. And, and I don't blame you, but let me tell you something. I, I sound good to me. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for all of you that have made it here this morning. And let me do as I do every Sunday morning. I like to thank my friends and uh, my followers there on Facebook and uh, those that uh, follow us on YouTube. Amen. Thank God for you. Let me also uh, uh, thank God for all of you uh, uh, preachers that sneak and listen to Pastor Harmon. Amen. It's all right. You take my message and go on and, and distribute it. Amen. And, and that's all right. As long as the word of God is getting out. Amen. Amen. And some of your messages I listen to. Amen. Uh, don't think Pastor Harmon don't need somebody to preach to him. Now, I'm talking about you you righteous preachers. I ain't talking about you crooks out here. You folks that are out there robbing folks, I ain't talking about you. Sometimes I get on this thing and I may uh, scroll across some stuff you don't put up. And ain't none of it. Half of, half of it is right and half of it is wrong. It ain't, it ain't good for folks. Amen. But I thank God for those little preachers out there who are... Uh, getting out there every Sunday and getting your Bible studies going throughout the week, uh, giving truth. Amen. I thank God for you. It ain't a whole lot of us. We don't have a lot to offer. We're probably not the best looking uh, gentlemen. Uh, we probably don't dress that fancy and uh, uh, we ain't much to behold. But all we can offer you is the truth. Amen. A lot of people don't want that, but, but that's all we got. That's all we can offer you. Amen. I was, uh, let, me, let me give you the death clock before I forget that uh, one of my sons is running a little late uh, to operate the, uh, the cameras back there. He should be pulled in very shortly, and he know the old man going to be very upset. Amen. Uh, DJ will be out shortly to, to read, and he usually, if I get ahead of myself, he'll give me a, a signal that, uh, Dad, you forgot the, the death clock. Amen. But, but the old brain cells are working this morning. And let me give you this sad news. Amen. This, this is nothing that I in, enjoy to do uh, to give you this news. Amen. But I want you to understand that every second of the day, amen, there is a soul that is, that is going to the pit. Amen. That will never return to this earth. Amen. The death clock, let me refresh this old thing here. The death clock as of midnight uh -huh, in the United States here, I'm talking the United States now, the numbers are much larger when we talk worldwide, but here we're just talking about the United States and the death clock is sitting at 3,498 souls have gone into judgment. Amen. Those are some staggering numbers. Amen. On average, about 
7,000 or, or a little bit more than 7,000 uh, souls uh, leave this earth. Amen. Some of them go on to be with the Lord, which, which is my desire. Amen. Uh, but then uh, there are those who did not accept our Lord. There are those who said, uh, right, not right now, I got a little time. And uh, they lifted up their eyes and they're in a place uh, of darkness, a place that is apart from God. Amen. A place where there is no forgiveness. Amen. That is a horrible place. Amen. I at one time was on that road myself. Mm -hmm. And then there was this old uh, traffic cop that God had put out there and, and said, not this way, uh, Donnie. Not this way, uh, uh, Don. Uh, uh, you need to go that way because if you stay on this path, mm -hmm, uh, you may shorten your own years. You may end up in a place that you don't want to be. Amen. So I took heed and I, I, I traveled the path uh, that they uh, suggested for me and found out that it was a good path. It was a good uh, fit for me. Amen. Now, I have not been saved all my life. I done did some of the same things that you all have done as well. Amen. So uh, I know where you're at. I know where you're coming from. I've been told untruth before, but I went in the scripture and I saw it myself. Amen. Why? Because I wanted to know. Amen. The Bible says that at the age of 12 is accountability. Amen. Or when you come in the knowledge of. I was reading the headlines and unfortunately... Uh, there was a young fellow, I believe on Friday night, that was shot and killed. And let me offer my condolences to his family. Amen. And uh, there was another headline that indicated that within the 46 weeks, there have been 45 school shootings. Amen. And just recently, I believe there in California, he, I believe he was 15 year old and, and he shot a couple. I believe there were two or three that uh, he shot, and I believe one died. Uh, I'm not sure on the number. Sometime I'm up north, and things don't operate, and I don't get all the reception that I should get, and I try to keep up on some of these things. Amen. But uh, the point is that uh, the Bible says that at the age of 12, we are accountable, or if we come into the, uh, the knowledge of, at age 10, you accountable. Uh, listen, fella, if you come into knowledge at age 8, you're accountable. Some people, when we talk about, when us preachers talk about hell, you only picture grown folks in hell. Huh? You may picture, you say, well, man, most of the 20-year-olds and, and them, them old people is in hell. But let me tell you, friend, that there are young, a lot of young people in the pit. Mm-hmm. See, there are a lot of folks that disobeyed God's word. Amen. And we hate to think about little young 15-year-old, 16-year-old children in hell. Amen. But they have an opportunity to accept God just like we do. God's word doesn't change for me. God, well, you, we have to change for God's word. Amen. I was uh, flipping through the uh, Facebook page and I, I came across the... Uh, uh, the, the ending of the Church of God in Christ, the Holy Convocation. Amen. And I hope a lot of you uh, preachers come back energized. Mm -hmm. I know it's just a few of you. I know it's a few of you just hanging in there hoping things turn out. I understand that. I'm still, I came out of the Church of God in Christ. Amen. So I know there's still a few good fellas in there. There's still a few good men. And you're just hanging on hoping things turn around. Amen. But you need to start crying a little bit. Uh, you need to start telling some of the other fellas here, hey man, this ain't right. We can't do this. Amen. That was a preacher, I believe he was preaching on their closing day. And he began to speak in tongues. And then he stopped and said, everybody that got the Holy Ghost, let's pray in tongues. How foolish. Now, I'm just going to give most of you bishops that were sitting there the benefit of the doubt that you didn't want to put the man on the spot. Uh, but I hope that you pulled him to the side and corrected him. As a bishop, 
He ought to know better. He ain't supposed to be up there. Listen, the Bible said at the most, there are only supposed to be three that speak in tongues. And, and if that's the case, they're supposed to be one at a time, and they're supposed to be an interpreter. But a lot of you folks, you, you, you just change it. You don't care. You're so used to changing God's words. It doesn't mean anything to you. So you, you just go on. Amen. Let me give you the title of today's message. And before I give you the title, let, let me just uh, let you know that uh, Mother Harmon here, that, that's my wife, Mother Harmon, is not Pastor Harmon, it's Mother Harmon. Uh, Mother Harmon didn't sit down with me to write a message. Uh -huh. uh, Mother Harmon didn't uh, look at the notes uh, because I don't have any. Amen. What you get is raw. What you get, I'm, I'm getting it straight from God. I'm going to give it to you. I ain't going to change one word. Mother Harmon, maybe, maybe she critiques me, but I, like I told you before, it'll go in one ear and out the other. Because uh, Pastor Harmon only has one boss. Uh-huh. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that's my boss. Amen. I know a lot of you preachers talking about happy life, happy wife, and I can concentrate, but that ain't God. Uh, I'm going to preach whether Rochelle happy or not. I love the girl to death. That's my wife. But if she ain't happy with me preaching the word of God, so be it. Pastor Harmon going to keep on preaching. Uh, now that I got that disclaimer out of the way, let me give you the title of the message. Oh, the, uh, this message is uh, for you leaders. Amen. But it's also for you laymen. It's also for anyone that hears it because uh, sometime in the future, God may call you the pastor. Or God may call you to, to be an evangelist, uh, a gentleman. Uh, notice when I say these things, I never said that God would call a woman to be a pastor or an elder or a bishop. But you know, uh, we've changed it so much, or you've changed it so much, that's what we have. We got women elders, women uh, bishops, and, and so on. Some of you have made yourself these things, and, and God ain't, ain't called now one of you. Hallelujah. I got a sister-in-law, she'll tell everybody she's a, a, a minister. But soon as she get around this old fella, everything changed. Listen, if you're a minister today, go ahead and keep on ministering. Or get yourself right. Hallelujah. Today's message, uh, you there on Facebook, you've got it already. You've got it before any of those that are sitting here. You got it before anybody that, that will view it on YouTube. Amen. I ain't got to run this message across nobody for approval. Amen. God put it on my heart. Amen. I believe God gave it to me last night, somewhere around 7 or 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, God don't talk to me like some, of he, like some of you say he talked to you. I don't sit down and have a full-blown conversation. Well, God, no. Well, well, God said this and then I said, no, that ain't. God puts it on my heart. He speaks to my heart. He speaks to my mind. But listen to some of you folks. It's just like you sitting down at a table here. And, 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 and you're just chit-chatting with God. Hey Amen. The title of the message. Warning to the elders. Warning to the elders. Why to the elders, Pastor Harmon? Because you elders, and when I say elders, I mean every pastor, every preacher, every bishop, because you are responsible. You disseminate information uh, to those that are in the pews. You disseminate the same information to those who are watching you via Facebook, YouTube, uh, television, and, and radio. However you uh, uh, put that, uh, disseminate that message, people are hearing it. And you are responsible for what you give. Amen. Pastor Harmon realizes that every word that comes out of this old mouth of mine, that I'm going to have to stand before God for every word. And so are you. That's why I tell you every Sunday, get out your Bibles. In fact, go ahead right now while uh, Pastor Harmon get on through this little monologue of mine. Uh, get your Bible. Get your Bible and just follow along. 
Amen. If I change one word, like I tell you every Sunday, flip the switch. Turn me off. Every pastor that says, well, it's okay for you to do this, and you can do that, and this is okay too. Tell them to show you in the scripture. Because uh, we're going to be uh, judged by the thing in the book. God ain't going to judge me based on Webster Dictionary or something you wrote or something someone else wrote. He's only going to uh, judge me by what's in the scripture. Did I obey the scripture? Hallelujah. Brother DJ, you with me today? I am. All right. Hallelujah. These are my two sons. One of them, know he, he, he got a meeting right after service with me because he's a little late. Amen. Amen. And uh, thank you, DJ, for, for being on time. And I hope that this is the last time that uh, this happens. Sometimes, uh, and when I'm sitting up here waiting to, to bring the message, uh, I, I know everybody don't uh, have their Bibles. That's why we got this machine that, that put that scripture out there for you so you can see it. Amen. So uh, I depend on uh, uh, the two sons because I don't have anybody else. Amen. And, and they're doing a great job. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're doing a great job. But I know a lot of you don't have your Bible, so I'm dependent on them to get that scripture up here while I'm expounding it so you can see it. So you will know if Pastor Harmon changed it. And I told you and I, once and I'm going to tell you again. If I change the scripture, flip me off. I don't want to lead anybody astray. Mm -hmm. Listen, your, your dollars, your Benjamins, and your Franklins, it don't mean nothing to me. I don't need your money. All I need to, to, to you to have is the truth. Amen. It doesn't matter to me that all I see here is, is this red cotton and this nice looking wood here that I have to preach to. It doesn't matter, as long as you can hear me. Uh, you there, Brother uh, Kevin Christie there in Jamaica, every day uh, this brother encourages me. If it's just a good morning, Pastor, a good morning, brother, I see it. Thank you, uh, my friend. There are a lot of you can't call your name that that encouraged Pastor Harmon, and it helps me. But let me tell you, sir, let me tell you, ma'am, if you don't say one thing, Pastor Harmon's still going to get up here and preach the truth. Hallelujah. We are responsible. In fact, Dante, uh, give me uh, the book of James. Give me uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 real quick. And put it up there so my friends uh, there watching can see it. Hallelujah. Uh, DJ, uh, read it for me, son. James chapter 3, verse 1. Uh-huh. My brethren, be not many masters. Now listen here. Uh, James is telling you, you elders here. And not only you elders, you, my brethren, you uh, uh, lay people too. Uh-huh. You that have such a desire to go out and expound the scripture like you know what you're talking about. He's talking about you too. He says, be not many masters or be not many teachers. Uh-huh. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Isn't that something? That we receive a greater condemnation. Why? Because uh, we can stand here and uh, those lay persons take what we say as the gospel. They take that as good instruction and, and they follow it. And some of the instruction that is being given will lead people right here to the pit. I don't want to be responsible for that. Amen. Now we're going to get to our message here. DJ uh, and Dante, please get me over to the book of Acts. And I want chapter 20 of the book of Acts. Amen. And we're going to start around verse 18. On through the end of that, that chapter. I believe it's 38 verses. Uh, 18 through 38. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, now listen folks. Uh, Pastor Harmon is somewhat of a long winded preacher. Amen. It's, it's because God want me to 
to help you understand the scripture. Uh, a lot of us will take scripture and we'll take it out of its context and says, well, this is what it means. And that's not what it means at all. Praise God. Dante, before we before I dive into my message, I'm sorry, the DJ, get, get on over there to, to third John real quickly. And I just want verses probably one and two. I may go to three, but first third John. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of uh, your prosperity preaching uh, snakes, uh huh, they will take this verse. To get your money. Even the few that we, these few bishop, these crooked ones we got here in the city. Uh huh. Paula White, the lollipop preacher, Joel Osteen, uh, the Mr. Fix It, that's TD Snakes. And who's the other? Uh, a whole lot of these fellas that have changed God's word. Now, I want you to listen to this because they even got you, 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 you uh, late members going around talking about uh, the, the Bible said I should prosper and be in good health even as my soul prosper. It said that to me. The Bible ain't said nothing to you. But because you didn't heard your pastor say it and, and you had to go in your pocket mm -hmm, because you had to plant a seed. Remember? A few matches ago, I told you what the seed was. Uh, it was the word of God placed in your heart. And it was supposed to grow. But they told you, no, the seed uh, is your money. And if you want a big harvest, uh, you better give a big seed. Now, here is John who is writing a letter. I'm sure some of you, uh, if not all of you, have sometime written a letter. And then now we got email and, and, and sometime we just type some things. But when you've ever written a formal letter, uh, you had a heading, you had a greeting. So listen to the greeting that John is giving Gaius. This is not talking to you. Read, son. Third John chapter 1 verse 1. Uh-huh. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, mm -hmm. whom I love in the truth. Uh huh. Beloved, I wish above all things. Now, remember now, uh, Sister Tina, that he's writing a letter to a person, not to the church here. Mm hmm. So he's writing to Gaius. And what do you say again there, DJ? Beloved, I wish above all things uh -huh. that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul. Prosper. All right, put the brakes on. I don't need to go no further. But here it is that this is a greeting. You know, if I wrote a letter, Sister Tamla, I would say, Hello, Sister Tamla. Uh, this is your old friend. I hope this letter finds you in good health. It's just a greeting. But they've used this to take money from you uh, that you're supposed to be prosperous, that you ain't never supposed to go through anything. Uh, liar! Now, DJ, let's preach. Let's go to the truth here. Uh, we're going to start at Acts uh, chapter 20, verse 18. DJ, you ready? I am. Well, let's get these spiritual tools out and let's go to work. It reads, and when they were come to him, mm -hmm. he said unto them, ye know from the first day that I came. Into All right, hold on here. Let me, I should have, let me give you the background here. Uh, Paul is about to, to leave the scene. Uh, he's about to, about to be going to be with the Lord. Amen. So he says, I need to call a meeting of all these elders, of all of you that's going to carry the word of God and disseminate it to others. I need to call a meeting with them. So he calls these elders, and when he comes, uh -huh, he says, what again? Read that again, DJ. And when they were come to him, mm -hmm. he said unto them, Ye know from the first day I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all. You all know how I behave myself. You see? You know how I acted among you and those that were watching me. Mm -hmm. uh, so Paul is laying this background, uh, uh, he's laying this foundation for all the elders, all those that are in, th in authority. Uh-huh, read. 
19, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the Jews always try to catch him up in something. Uh huh. We and, you know, see, he, uh, Paul was even beaten. Uh, they even sought to get him locked up, and he was locked up a few times. But he served God with all humility. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of evil things that befell him. But yet he maintained. Yet he was an example before them. You know, some of you bishops out here and you elders, uh, yes, you that you, you got a wife at home and you got a girlfriend. And some of you got a wife at home and you got a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And some of you fellas done even went out and got some kids out here. Uh, some of you been found out and some of you haven't. Mm -hmm. And what you should have did is gone to your members and say, hey, uh, I made a mistake. This is what happened. Please forgive me. Uh, so we can get this thing taken care of. We can forgive you and get it all clean. We ain't got to wait till a scandal break out. But see, because of these things, uh, people blaspheme the name of God because of you. Because of something you did. And what you knew you need to do is step down and start your first word over. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that's Bible. I ain't giving you nothing that, that's my opinion. Read, son. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and, mm -hmm. tem and temptations, which befell me by lying in wait of the Jews. Uh huh. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. All right, so slow down a little bit, son. You're doing good, but old man got to kind of get these spiritual shoes on to run up and catch up with you. So just slow it down a little bit. But here, Paul is saying how he kept back nothing. Anything that was truth and that was going to help you, he gave it to you. And you know, sometimes, you know, we as pastors, I know it ain't many of us, but when we give you the truth, it hurt. You know, sometimes when we give you the truth, uh, you're fighting mad. You, you just can't wait to see Pastor Hammer. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. In fact, I might give him one a left or a right. I don't know. It just depends on where he's standing at. That, that's how some of you are, but see... Uh, I know that me giving you this truth is profitable for you. It ain't going to bring you no money, but let me tell you, sir, it's going to keep you out the pit. I know it's a hard thing. But Paul said he didn't hold this stuff back. You needed to know this, so he had to tell you. That's what I do every Sunday, and you that send me back to my father. Uh, I go back and tell him, you know what? Hey, I'm back here again because this is what he called me to do. With patience, I come back again. Read, son. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto mm -hmm. you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly. He have, listen, he has shown it to you in demonstration, and he's taught you. You, you see, he, was a, he didn't just talk it. He walked the walk and talked the talk. That's what he did. But can you say that, elder? Can you say that, pastor? Can you say that, preacher? Can you say it publicly? Listen, I, I, I don't understand this. You and all these big churches here, I'm talking about this city because I, I, I ain't living in all these other cities. If you... Call yourself a preacher and you're supposed to get the word of God. Look around at how many members you got in your building. Why can't you disseminate this publicly? You have a platform just like I have. I don't know much about it, but I know enough to get, get this word on there so somebody can hear it. Why can't you with all your big churches, with all your big congregations, you got more money than old Pastor Harmon, I'm here by myself. You got the equipment to give the information that you preach, that you say you live, put it out here publicly. Paul said he taught publicly. And then he said privately from house to house. Maybe there were some that were elderly, Brian, couldn't get around. And Paul had to go there. That's your job, Pastor. You got members that, uh, that are elderly, can't get out too much. You don't go and see them. But I bet you want to know if they sent their tithes. Mm -hmm. 
me an example. Put the word of God out there. Let me tell you why most of these crooks don't do it. Uh, yes, I'm talking about you, elder. I'm talking about you, bishop. I'm talking about you, pastor. Because, you see, if you start to, to broadcast it publicly, oh, uh, that's going to take away some of your green. Uh, you see, because you're so used to selling your CDs after church. Uh, uh, some of you, you're still selling cassette tapes. Uh, any way you can get a dime, you're going to do it. You see, Paul talked publicly. And here I am, like a whole lot of these little fellas, uh, we're trying to give, give the word publicly for free like it's, supposed, like it's supposed to be. Read, son. Verse 21. Testifying both to the Jews and, and also the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. 22. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Now listen, Paul has started to tell them, listen. Uh, here I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to me when I get there. But the spirit of God is taking me there. You see? Now, some of you fellas, you may not be going to Jerusalem. Uh, you might just be preaching to your own community. We should turn the heat down. I told you all, it's, it's getting hot in here. So I know I can't take hell. I can't even take 70 degrees. Turn it down, honey. Now, some of you... You, you're not going to Jerusalem. Some of you just, you just going over the state line. You, you may be going over there to Chicago somewhere. Uh, you, you may be going to Arizona. You may even fly on down to California. And some of you big shot preachers, you might fly on down to Vegas for a weekend. Mm -hmm. But see, uh, you don't want to, you, you don't care. You want to know what's going to befall you. You're going to want to know before you leave uh, how much they pay me when I get there. Uh, what's my speaking fee? Uh huh. How many, if I go there, how many uh, of my followers, that if I go tell the truth, how many of them going to leave me? You see, Paul didn't know what was going to befall him, but you know what? He went. Read, son. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Uh huh. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses. In every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. They abide him. The Holy Ghost don't witness to him. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be hard when you get there. Uh-huh. Well, there, there's going to be some trouble. There's going to be some affliction. Listen, they live in you. They abide in you. They're coming your way. But listen to the lollipop preacher. Oh, God doesn't want anything. He wants you to live your best. Be your best today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Let's do it today. Here old Pastor Harmony, all he's talking about is just be oh, a humble, unworthy servant. I ain't sure. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to be my best today. That's why I follow old Joel. Let me tell you, sir, that's why you're blind as well. Because all you see is you. You can't see Christ through all your stuff. Read, son. Verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear Listen, unto my... Paul, even knowing that, uh, that these things are going to happen to him, he knows that when he gets there to Jerusalem, he's going to face some opposition. Mm -hmm. Just like every Sunday I get up, I face opposition from you all. Uh, some of you, some of you still with me, some of you say have bad comments to say, that's opposition. All you have to do is, is go see if I follow the book. See if you have erred or have I. Or uh, did your pastor say something and you just go by what your pastor said? Some of you have, you got more patriotism, uh, you have uh, more loyalty to your pastor than you do the word of God. I had a guy I talked to last, well, last week, all he could say, what my bishop said, what my bishop said, and my bishop this, and what is wrong with you? Tell me what God said. You keep telling me what the bishop said. Let me tell you, when he left there, uh, he, he was tied up in, in this kind of knot. Because you keep telling me what your bishop said and not what God said. Read. 
But none of these things move me. Mm-hmm. Neither count I my life dear unto my Listen, I listen. All these things that, that the Holy Ghost doesn't reveal that's going to happen to me. All the things that I can perceive in my own mind that's going to happen. None of these things move me. Read. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus mm-hmm. to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's why nothing moved him because he had a mission. He had to fulfill the ministry. God told him to do this. And you that say God called you, we find out if God called you uh, if you're going to lose a few members and, and your message change. Uh huh. You start to put it down there in, in, in first gear and, and you, you throw the knob away so it doesn't come out of first gear. Uh, you're going to preach something that they all right with. Read, son. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Now, Paul is saying, let me paraphrase. He said, I love all y'all. But, you know, my time is winding down here. Uh, the Spirit of God showed me that uh, I'm going to Jerusalem and I may not make it back. You're not going to see me anymore. But I want you to remember some things before I get up all out of here. And some, uh, a lot of those folks really love Paul. And I can imagine a lot of them will say, don't speak like that, Paul. But God already done showed Paul what he's about to go through. He already done showed him, uh, Paul, you ain't coming back. So he took this opportunity. Let me tell you, sir, I may not be back here next week. I don't know. Maybe God called me home. But I got to take this opportunity to tell you the truth. Read, son. Verse 26. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now, Paul is saying, listen. I have given you the truth. Some of you are mad at me, but let me tell you, your blood is not on my hands. I'm clean of this thing. I did not hold back what I should have gave you. I gave it to you. How many of you can say that? Hmm? How many of you can say, I'm not responsible. I gave you the truth. How many of you men right now, you have a congregation full of folks. You got uh, Susie and Bob living together. Ain't been more married than two fleas. And you say it's all right. Or you don't say nothing at all. Are you guilty? Read, son. Verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Listen, Paul is saying, I didn't hesitate. I didn't kind of hide it. I didn't put it over here and say, I ain't going to touch this. Uh, I was talking to a, a preacher the other day, and, and I said, well, what if, well, so we were talking about marriage, and uh, I said, well, what if God have you to preach on marriage? He said, well, God won't have me to do that. Well, how do you know? Well, because I ain't going to preach that. And you call yourself a pastor. Uh, listen, friend, God tell me what to preach. I don't come in here and figure out, uh, uh, let me look and see what's going on. I think I'm going to preach on this. Uh, uh, no, fella. God put it on my heart with the preach. He know what the people need. I don't have a clue. I see you when you're here. I don't know what's happening out there. I don't know when you're at work and what's going on. But God knows. Paul said, I didn't hide none of the truth from you. I didn't shun it away from you. Uh, when you, when you had a, a question, if I didn't know, I told you, wait a minute, let, let me go to God and find out. Let me search the scripture. I told you last week, I talked to a man for about two hours and 45 minutes about this marriage and divorce, and his pastor only talked to him for 10 minutes. Have you shunned the truth? Hallelujah. None of your blood is on my hand. I'm going to tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, you do with it what you want. But your blood is not on my hands. Read, son. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. He said, listen here. Take heed to yourselves. Listen, he's talking to the elders here. But you can take it too, my friend. 
But more specifically, he's talking to those that have the ability to disseminate information to large amounts of people. This goes for you too. Just take it and put it on the shelf. Don't throw it away and say, oh, but that was just for the elders. That message wasn't for me. Oh, it's for you too. Oh, you never know when you might be in these shoes here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't never plan to be a pastor. I told you God saved me back in 1989, but I didn't plan to be a pastor. Some of you bishops that are bishops now, I came up with you. I saw you wanting to be a pastor. Somebody came in and preached a good message, and you got the feeling, and you wanted to run and do it. I sat there and watched you. God didn't call you. He hadn't called me at the time. And now you done run and got yourself into something you shouldn't have. And now you're too proud hearted to step down because God never put you there. Some of you, your, 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 your daddy was a pastor. Oh, uh, and then God called him home. And you talking about, oh, well, I got to fill those shoes. Just like the lollipop preacher. You see where he had? That's where you're headed. Oh, uh, come on over here. Right here to the pit. God didn't call you. How do you know, Pastor Harmon? Because you won't preach his word. You won't preach the truth. Listen, fella, your hands are bloody. Yeah, I know you might get up and look at your hands and say, what is Pastor Harmon talking about? Well, I don't see no blood on my hands. Uh, my hands is black. Uh, my hands are white. Uh, yeah, I don't see no. What that crazy pastor's talking about? Hmm. Then you don't know the scripture. Uh, you don't see the pit either. You don't even believe the pits there. Hmm. Read, son. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the, the which the hope. Not only to yourselves. Don't take heed. Don't just consider yourself. Uh, don't worry about the flock. That's what it's talking about, you as members. Uh, you ain't even got to be a member. You that hear me. Uh huh. Take heed to what you tell them. James told you not to be many masters or many teachers. Take heed to yourself and to the flock. Go ahead. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased you, you with see? his own blood. God, listen, he made you an overseer if he called you. Some of you folks are trying to oversee something that God didn't call you to. But you that know that you that, that, that kind of went aside, that God did call you, and you, you kind of you, you moved over a little bit, and you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. You're not feeding the flock. You better take heed to yourself. And the people that you are leading, because what you teach them, they're going out believing it. Some of your members know you ain't right. You still have a remnant of, of people in your church that's just like this, this old fella here. We still old school. Uh -huh. we, we still believe in uh, uh, no women preachers. Uh, old school. You, you know what I'm talking about. Like the, the old way that, that your parents taught us. We still believe in that. Uh, we still believe that uh, uh, you got to be married to one wife. We still believe you can't be sleeping with your girlfriend and call yourself saved. Uh, we still believe you can't be a gay organist and lead the choir. We still old school. There's still a remnant of us left. Read, son. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Now listen. Paul said, I know that, that after I'm gone, uh, after my departure, he doesn't mean just leaving Asia and going to Jerusalem. He means that after his death, after he's gone, that grievous wolves, these are people who don't care nothing about these sheep. They don't care nothing about these folks in the church. Grievous wolves. They don't care about nobody but themselves. Me, myself, and I. What I can get. They don't even believe the word. All they do is preach it so they can get a few dollars. Read, son. Verse 30. Hallelujah. Also of your own self shall men arise. Listen, not only are they going to come in. Huh? Uh, see, the, the, the elders that you got sitting up here. Of your own selves. You see? Not only, uh, look, they ain't going to come off the street and, and, and join your church. 
They ain't been here 30 minutes and then they won't tell you, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an elder and all this good stuff. He said, the ones that have been up here with you already, they're going to be just as bad. Uh, uh, Brother James going to leave, been with you 30 years. Now he's going to go out there and start him a church. God ain't called him. You see, you and him may have had a spat. You and him may have had a disagreement. So he's going to go start his own church. Uh-huh. He's going to bring Sister Brenda with him and he's going to talk to a few of them other people over there and all he knows is what you've been teaching. Read, son. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away dis dis disciples after them. Listen, I done told you. They're going to bring in perverse things to draw the people, uh, not only the members of your own church, but others that they pull in themselves. And lead them disciples of Christ the wrong way. I know the gospel I preach. Ah, I, I know it ain't such a lovable thing. Uh, because you can't do a whole lot of uh, with, with, with listen to old Pastor Harmon. Uh, you can't just a whole lot of can't do this and you can't do. There's too many can't do's. But let me go on over here uh, to Bishop Tuckaway because over here you know, I can do what I want to. You see, I ain't got all them rules. I ain't got all them guidelines. You see, I don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, see, Pastor Harmon, uh, one woman told me, you know, Pastor Harmon, if you lighten up, maybe you get some folks in there. Uh, sister, uh, maybe if you listen to Pastor Harmon, uh, you can get off the road headed to the pit. You see, Jesus already done told us, he said, wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead unto destruction. And many... Many that will be that go there because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Can't do too much here. Why? Uh, because you're on straight street. Uh -huh. uh, straight street and, and, and narrow avenue they intersect. So you see there ain't too much you can do here. Uh -huh. Read son. 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Listen, Paul said in the space of three years that I was here, I warned everybody day and night. I didn't let up on nothing. And not only did he just warn you, he warned you with tears. He's showing you the compassion that he had for you. You're still tearing me down every day. Oh, and your bishop ain't doing nothing for you. Oh, Pastor Harmon need to shut up. Oh, I can't shut up. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. I told you, I got to cry loud and spare not. I got to lift up my voice against all unrighteousness. I'm not just going to talk about this. Oh, that ain't what, that ain't what uh, he called me to preach about. Just this. No, I'm going to have to go across the whole game. I can't do it all in one service. So in the next service, it'll be something else. But I got to go all across. I got to stomp on sin wherever I see it. Read, son. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all which are sanctified. Listen, he said he's going to give you this. He's going to commend you to God so he can build you up and give you an inheritance where among those that are set apart, set apart from the world. Ones that set apart, they can't do everything they want to do. That's who your heritage is among. It's among them that are sanctified. You know, when, you, when you're sanctified, there's a whole lot of stuff you got to pull off. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they tell you that. Uh, listen, uh, God, you said you say, I know you're still smoking. But, you know, these things, these things take time. Just take your time and, and just keep praying. Listen, stop lying to these folks. Ain't nobody going to heaven with a new port in their hand. Stop lying to them. The Bible says any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I used to have a drinking problem. Don't tell me God can't do it. When you become sincere in your heart, he takes that away just like that. And you don't even know it's gone. You don't even know you miss it. Stop lying to these people. You're responsible. Your blood, their blood is on your hands. I'm going to clean my hands because I don't want no blood on my hands. Not even my own family. I don't want that blood on my hands. I'm going to tell them the truth. 
my enemies, those that don't even like me, some of you that are talking about me right now, I'm still going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I hope you change your mind about me. I hope you like me. I hope you be my friend. But if you don't, I still love you. I still going to pray for you. I still got to give you the truth. I don't want your blood on these old hands of mine. Read, son. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Listen, now, that, that's, he said, I've covered no man's silver or gold. Some of you don't pre uh, preach this word unless there's money involved. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of you, call your bishop and see if he'll come over to your church. Uh, you ain't going to talk to him. You talk to his secretary in there, and they're going to need a fee down. Now, you tell me I'm lying. I ain't scared to call a damn one of y'all. All of you crooked. You know who I'm talking about, you big uh, uh, Daryl Hines, Cedric Daniels, and that other fellow up there on Silver Spring. You know you ain't living it right because we see it right here in the book. And those of you that come tell me, oh, you, sh huh? you shouldn't have called them out. Listen, I'm doing what the Bible says. Maybe you're, you're, you're straighten up and fly right, brother. Maybe you'll stop selling God's word to the people. Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, you said uh, God has uh, blessed us to be best-selling authors. And he has given us insight for the believer. Remember that? Huh? You remember that? Yeah, you guys posted that. And you said... Come and get your copy. No, uh, uh, let me retract that. You didn't say come get your copy. Uh, Pastor Army got that wrong. You said come and purchase your copy. So now if God gave you insight uh, for the believers, why do you got to sell it to me? Hmm? Freely you receive. Freely give. Do you remember that? Keep on selling God's word. Uh, you keep going off something that God did for you uh, years ago. Let me tell you, don't you remember you said that uh, when God brought those out of Egypt, uh, he disobeyed them. The, the, they disobeyed him and God destroyed him. Do you remember that? If you don't, fella, it's only one chapter. Get over there and read it. Go over there and remind yourself. Read, son. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. It ain't one of you going to work nothing. Listen to that, Paul. Paul is the example. That's why he called the elders, get together here. I need to talk to you. What he's saying here, I didn't burden all the folks with everything I needed. He said, these old hands I got right here, uh, 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 they, they, they were working for the need of those that were with me and myself. Mm-hmm. You know, some of you folks can't even, uh, you got your folks running over to Chicago, they're keeping your books. You can't even give them gas money. But you don't worry about gas, do you? You run right over there to, to Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you didn't know, my sister's on a fixed income. She ain't got the money to, to keep running over there. Mm-hmm. But see, you don't have to worry about that because uh, uh, your money keeps coming. Uh-huh. You can't even go to some of your, the, the, the churches that you're over and preach to them unless you get some money. Let me come over there and preach. I won't charge you a dime. And I guarantee you, some of them people are going to get up out of there because they're going to say, I never heard this before. Or oh, where's that at? Oh, it is in the Bible. Well, Bishop never brought this up. Hmm. Listen, this old job that God gave me, a whole lot of people don't like me. Why? Because God told me to go tell the truth. He already done prepared me for it, sir. I done been called every name, don't you remember? I used to work in law enforcement. They done called me everything in the book. Oh, you can't hurt these old feelings. The only way you hurt these feelings is you continue to say, I don't want that God you serve. Why did you hurt me? Because, my friend, I know where you're headed. To 
you repent. Read, son. I have showed you all things that how that so laboring you ought support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord yeah, Jesus. Yeah, you ain't supporting nobody. There are some members in, the, in these churches here. You see them. Well, maybe you don't because oh, you, they don't never get to come up front. They don't never get to shake a hand. Uh-huh. Uh, you don't even know their name. You don't even know what their name start with. Because, see, all your, uh, the nice folks, all the, the nicely dressed folks, all the folks that got a good job and that can contribute, they sit up here. Oh, they're all scattered around here. Mm-hmm. But see that little fella in the back there? Oh, the one way back there with the, with the old Eskimo coat that's toe up. Yes, him, the one uh, who ain't got a decent pair of shoes. The one that has to come every Sunday, he don't smell so good. The one that your usher say, sit back here, sir. Yeah, I'm talking about that one. That's the week. That's the one you should be embracing. That's the one you should say, listen, when you come to our boutique, you don't have to pay. But now anybody that comes to your boutique gotta pay for the clothes that they bought you. I know they don't like me. Listen, yeah, you ain't no, some of my nieces don't call me and threaten me because of y'all. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep preaching the truth. That's my boss. If he's your boss, we're supposed to be preaching the same thing. You ain't the only one. I'm talking about all, all of them up in here that ain't doing it. All you got to do, friend, is read the book. Let me see if Pastor Harmon write about me. Let me see what did he, oh my God, he is right. Now get on your knees and repent and go tell the people you're sorry. Yes, a whole lot of them might get up and leave because they don't want to hear the truth. And we're going to ease on over there to that while, while, while it's on my mind in just a second. Uh, a lot of them ain't going to want to hear the truth. Uh, you're going to lose a few of them. But let me tell you, friend, I'll come stand with you. I'm preaching against you now because you're not preaching the truth. But once it's time to preach the truth, I'll come stand with you. I'll stand, I'll put my chest out. I'll stand right beside you and say, God didn't forgave him. I'm with him. Read, son. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. Mm -hmm. And to remember the words uh, of the Lord Jesus. How now, he said, listen, don't forget this. He told you to remember the words of our Lord Jesus. Now, if you're following along with me in your Bible, I told you, some of you got that good, nice Bible that uh, the letters are written in red. Uh-huh. And some of you just got a Bible. It's okay. And it's all black letters. But uh, here, uh, he says, remember and these are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Read it, son. How he said, uh -huh. it is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give. But all you got is your hand out to receive. That's all you want. Give me, give me, give me. When have you given anything? Two of you bishops I set up under. Huh? So I ain't, you know I ain't talking stuff that I don't know. But see, God hadn't called me to preach. So I couldn't say anything. I stayed in my place. But now here, he called me to pastor. Hey, he called me to preach. He called me to stand against unrighteousness because all unrighteousness is sin. Not some of it. Not just a little bit. No, he said all of it. Mm-hmm. In a 20-year period, maybe 25 years, I sat under both of you. How many times did you come to visit that little old church over there that only had five or six members? How many times did you come and say, hang in there, Pastor. It's going to be all right. We still with you. Let me tell you, in the 25 years, I only seen both of you one time. In 25 years, what kind of love do you have for those that don't have? Read, son. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. Mm-hmm. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's Now listen. And kissed him. Listen. After Paul got done, because no doubt there were some of them that were crooked and some of them that were really genuine. 
But after Paul got done, they was, they was sorry that Paul wasn't going to be around no more to help them and to teach them and guide them like he had done so many. So he got down and prayed with them. Listen, brother, when you change your way, I'm willing to get down and pray with you. I'm willing to meet you and say, yes, uh, brother, this wasn't right, but now we got it together. Uh, now we're doing it. Let me tell you, some of you pastors are sitting there talking about retirement. Mm-hmm. I got a news flash for you. You see, Paul didn't retire. Uh, and if he did, this was the retirement process that we go through. Uh, we don't just go off into the sunset and, and, and now we at George Webb every morning and having coffee and oh, I don't, I don't I'm pass it no more, I'm retired. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, because you work for your father, the devil. Uh-huh. You see, we in this thing for life. Hallelujah. Are you following the doctrine? Or are you making up stuff? I'm just about done. Uh, Dante, go over and give me uh, give me uh, uh, first Second Timothy chapter four. Give me verses about one through five, and I'm just about done. Uh huh. You have to follow the book. Uh huh. You gotta follow the book, my friend. You can't go making up things. Uh huh. And when the book is silent, you gotta be silent. That's the last thing the book said about uh, preachers is that a woman shouldn't preach, should not have authority over the man. Oh, uh, you gotta leave it right there. Oh, uh, you can't add it and talk about. Well, that was for that time. This is what was going on. Well, you were there. Yeah, you were there, weren't you? Huh? See, if the book said that, you better leave it alone. Don't take it no further, son. Now, the Bible says, how shall they hear except they have a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? I was listening to a fellow here, here in the city talking about, uh, uh, he invited people to Christ during praise and worship time. Because that's the time when people's spirit is open. And I invite them to say, come into my heart, God, and do with me as you will. Listen, the scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything. Uh-huh. You see, if you want him, you, uh, uh, how can they preach? They ain't heard the word. You ain't preach nothing. You just got a, a bunch of folks just jumping around. That's happy about whatever. And then you want to say, God is in my heart. Oh, I'm happy. God saved me. I'm so happy God saved me. Liar. Come here. Let me show you where you're headed. Get on over here. Right here to the pit. You are of your father, the devil. They need to hear the word. And let me give you a word. Uh huh. Get your pen out, write it down. You fake pastor, write this word down. R E P E N T. Repent. There is no forgiveness without repentance. Oh, but we happy. We happy. We, we singing it. And, and uh, he going to teach us how to speak in tongues next week. I told you, you and your father the devil. Uh, well, read, son. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 reads, mm -hmm. I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. At All right, the hold on right there. I'm just, uh, give me about 10 minutes, folks, and I'll be out your hair. Uh -huh. uh, give me about 10 minutes and I'll stop running up the front of you and down the back of you. Just hold on a second. Let me put a little more truth in you. You see, Paul told Timmy, I, I, I charge you before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, huh? He gave Timothy this charge. And you as a pastor, you as an elder, you get this same charge because you have the same job. You see, this is not for everybody. These, this is for you people that are in, th in authority. Because God shall judge the quick, meaning the alive. Uh, that's talking about me. Uh-huh. And the dead. That's talking about you. You 
that are not saved, you that are saved, you say, you that have a, a form of godliness and you deny the power thereof. How do we have a form of godliness? Oh, you come in here, you look all nice with your, with your, your, your what they call it, the skin suit, the skinny suit. Look at your, your big old T.D. Jakes walking around in a skinny suit. My God. You dressing like the Well, he is the world. Well, you dress it like he's supposed to. But see, when you claim to be with my Lord, he going to change all that. He going to take all that stuff off you. You see, God is going to judge the quick and the dead. And there are a lot of you people that are saved talking about, well, all my sins is forgiven. If I do this, he already forgave me for that. Mm. You need to come on in here on Tuesday night and get some teaching. Mm -hmm. Read, son. Preach the word. Be instant in season, mm -hmm. out of season. Hey, when you don't feel good. Listen, if, if it's too cold outside, uh, you still got to hear because somebody out here need this word. Uh, in season, out of season, huh? Uh, you you got to preach it with long suffering, with patience. Everybody ain't going to hear you. Everybody, but you still going to have to, next Sunday they back again. Give it to them again. Mm -hmm. With patience and long suffering. And with doctrine. You see that? Do you see the word there? This is doctrine. The book. Not something you wrote, Bishop. Not some insight. Not some insight that, that you claim God gave you. Uh, what about that insight right there? What about this doctrine right here? What about the insight in the book? Huh? Do we need to buy your book with your insight that you claim God gave you? Listen, fella. This is the only insight I got. Anybody that's preaching God's word, this is it. I don't care if you're a best-selling author. Listen, I don't care if you're 64 and you can run the, the, the quarter mile in three seconds. This is the doctrine. I don't care how many books you don't wrote. Uh, this is it. Uh-huh. You're a best-selling author. Let me show you where, where a lot of them at. Come on over here. They right here in the pit. They're screaming. They're hollering. God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Please forgive me. But let me tell you, Mr. Best-selling author, if you don't change your way, the pit is there for you. Read, son. Verse 3 reads, for the time will come when they will not endure. Oh, that time is right now. The scripture says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Let me tell you what sound doctrine is. Uh -huh. Well, you already know because I give it to you every week. Ever since God called me to pastor, I've been giving it to you every week. That's sound doctrine. You see, uh, unsound doctrine. Let me give you an example uh, because some of you still don't get the picture. This is my wife right here. Uh-huh. Uh, Mother Harmon, how you doing? She's not Pastor Harmon. There's nowhere in the Bible where you'll find that God called you tag team preachers here. Me and my wife. And you let the world on tell you, well, if God called you and she part of you, y'all, y'all both pastors. Oh, uh, listen, liar! And God gonna get you. You see, when when um, Moses was there in, in Egypt, he went to Pharaoh, uh, and Moses had his staff there, and uh, uh, here come these magicians, and they threw down the staff, and, and then there was a, a two-headed snake. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, there are no two heads here. Uh huh. You see, those two-headed snakes represented the devil. Yeah, because a uh, devil-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You don't know what to preach because you don't know if your wife's going to prove it, and she, and she don't know what she's going to do because she can't make up her mind. Mm hmm. But when Moses cast that rod down, it was one. She passed it too. You and her pastor. Can't nobody make a decision. 
Well, who's the head? You see, because the Bible tells us uh, that the pastor is the head, that the man is the head. You don't took this divine authority and you changed it. God said that the, the head of every woman is the man. But what you say? Uh, the head of every woman is, oh, well, we, we uh, uh, scratch that. It's just us because we, we, we're together because uh, the Bible said we should become one. That's why you're supposed to rightly divide it, sir. So the scripture has said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I know what you're getting here is sound because I come from the book. I don't change the book. Right from the book. And it goes right in the place it's supposed to fit in. I told you last week, some of you are still taking a square and you're trying to put it in a circle hole. Uh, you're there with your hammer just trying to beat it. You're trying to make it fit. Just like you try to make the word of God fit your uh, unfit life. Read, son. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Listen, uh, they want the kind of pastor they want. Uh huh. See, there ain't too many people coming this way. Why? Because he going to tell me about myself. I don't want to hear it. Uh, listen, friend, I told you what kind of pastor God may be. I ain't got to depend on you. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, uh, God may be one of them pastors that I only depend on him. See, if he really called you, he, uh, he would have helped you. But see, you start looking at other avenues. Uh-huh. That's all you got to do, friend. Look at the book. See if your ministry lines up with the book. They heaped unto themselves. Uh, they had itching ears. They wanted to hear uh, preachers and teachers that would say what they wanted to hear. There was a, a preacher here who, in the city here, he calls himself... A, a master prophet. Now listen, uh, uh, Brother Brian, I heard of master plumbers. DJ, I even heard of them master electricians. And Sister Rochelle, my sister even worked at Master Lock. But ain't nowhere in the scripture I see nowhere about a master prophet. Did you make up something, friend? Show me in the book. It ain't there. You are a master prophet. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Uh, are you a better prophet than uh, that prophet? Uh, uh, have you, what does that mean? Have God gave you some kind of special anointing? Let me tell you what it means, uh, fella, since you don't know. Let me tell you who called you since you don't know. Your father, the devil. If it ain't in a book, it's not so. And if it ain't so, it came from the pit. Paul asked the Galatians a good question. He said, who have betwixt you that you should believe another gospel? You see, in this gospel we got, there ain't no master prophets. There ain't no uh, big eyes and little U's. Mm -hmm. and, and another master prophet, Jordan. Uh, listen, uh, he has a website uh, uh, that his father hooked it up for him. I'm talking about his father, the devil. Because you can go there and you can take a class to become a prophet. And guess what? Uh, he says after you finish, I think it's about $250, you, <laughs> you even get a certificate. Now you might have to buy the frame yourself, but he'll give you a certificate. And then you can go tell your crooked pastor here, uh, where can I put it at on the wall? And let me tell you where he's going to tell you. Well, you can't put it here because all my stuff, all of what i done is up here. Itching ears. You want to hear something good. Huh? And then you want to be able to give something good. You're in the wrong field, my friend. Read, son. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now, hold on. Uh, we only got a few more verses. I think two, maybe two more verses. The scripture says that they shall turn away from the truth. Listen, friend, I told you. Follow the scripture. See, did Pastor Harmon give you the truth? 
I ain't changed one word. Follow it. See that I give you something other than that. See that I give you the truth. But you turn your ear from me. You don't want to hear me. You don't want to hear that stuff. You can't wait to get back to so-and-so's church because they don't talk about that. There's a remnant of you out there. You told yourself last week, I ain't, I ain't going to listen to him this week. I don't want to hear him. But here you are again, my friend. You know why? It's not because I'm a good preacher. It's not because I'm so good and handsome to look at. No, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. The only one I think I'm, that thinks I'm handsome, I think, is Rochelle. Yeah, and I care what she thinks about, about how I look. Sometimes she, she helped this old fella get dressed. Mm-hmm. But listen, uh, some of you can't sleep at night. Some of you, I told you, you're flipping in your bed all night and you're getting up at 2.30 in the morning looking for your Rolaids. Some of you need your, your Pepto-Bismol or your Maalox because you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. That's because the truth of God won't let you sleep. The truth of God is there fighting with you. Uh, you saying no, God, and God is saying yes. And you can't, you can't stop, and you can't. You just fighting and fighting. God won't let you loose. Why? Because He loves you. Mm hmm. But see, uh, sir, man, uh, I told you, all of us have an appointed time to leave here. Mm hmm. Well, God is there wrestling with you to try to uh, stop looking at it your way and see it his way. Uh, you're still there saying, no, God, I don't want you. But see, you don't see the time clock. You don't see that uh, on that date is your appointed time at 7.30 p.m. You don't see that. But here God is with this old gray-haired preacher that's wrestling with you, saying yes, no, yes, no. Uh, you see, the fight going to end after a while. Mm -hmm. And when that time comes and you have not submitted to God, uh -huh, uh, when you submit, you, you're underneath. Uh, you don't lead God around. You don't tell God what we're going to do or not. No, uh, he leads you. But see, when you keep fighting him and then your time comes around, there you go to your permanent home. Uh, let me retract that. Not, not your permanent home. Yeah, you go to your temporary home in the pit. Because the scripture says that uh, that place is going to be cast into the lake of fire. So there you go, you turn away the truth and you believe fables or you believe lies. You believe that it's all right uh, uh, that you, you're drinking and smoking. God, it said we can drink wine in the Bible, didn't it? Uh huh. It's all right, you celebrate, right? It's your birthday. Live it up. Go ahead. See, that's what your, the lollipop preacher tell you. Uh, uh, do you live your best life right now? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of you refuse to think uh, that God is going to take us through some things. Uh, you see, in my struggle, I become, God becomes strong. When in my struggle, when you're not, I can't do nothing myself. That's when God shows up and says, oh, yes, you can. Keep on moving, Donnie. I don't care what you think. Listen, my grace is sufficient. Listen, when I'm just about done here. When my, when my daddy was there on his deathbed, thank God I got to be there with him. But when he was on his deathbed, he called me there. He wanted to talk with me. And when I got there, he started telling me the, uh, what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to make sure and keep the family together. He wanted me to do this and do that. And I said, well, daddy, hold on, wait a minute. Why are you... Why are you putting that responsibility on me? I got older brothers and older sisters. Why me? My daddy told me because you can do it. That frail man laying there in the bed raised his hand up to me and said, because you can do it. After I took a breath, I said, I'm going to say no more. I will do it. Listen, that's just like God telling me when, they, when things are rough for me, he says, yeah, my grace is sufficient. But you folks want to believe lies and say, oh no, God don't want you to go through that. No, remember, God don't, you ain't supposed to be sick. God don't want you to go through all that. Uh, by his stripes we are healed, so get on up. Listen, if I don't have surgery, don't you touch me talking about get on up. 
And I'm going to get back to that scripture in a, in a few weeks because they don't took that out of context. Read, son. I think we're just about done. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Okay, we can hold up right there. It says, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Make sure you fulfill your ministry. Don't stop halfway. Because people are dependent on you. Oh, a lot of people won't, won't hear me. But some of you that are well known, uh, you have the ability uh, to draw people. But what you have done, you, know, you done got a little mixed up. You done saw the green and it done blind you a little bit. And now you depended on that. It ain't too late, fella. Change your way. Ask God to forgive you. Then go and ask the people to forgive you. And preach the truth. I'm sure they will. Some of them might leave you, but that's all right. They'll go somewhere else. And hopefully the next place they go, they'll hear the truth. You men, you know that Pastor Harmon is preaching the truth. This day will testify against you or for you. It already told us not to be many teachers. I'm telling you, I'm teaching you here right now. I have not changed God's word. Have you? Father in heaven, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you for your word, O oh God. I thank you for those elders, those pastors, those preachers who are supposed to preach your word, God, and you have given them an opportunity to straighten up and walk upright before you. God, allow them to humble themselves under your mighty hand that they may get their lives in order with you, oh God. God, I'm just a, a meek and unworthy servant and I thank you for this opportunity, God, to serve you. There's none like you, oh God. And Father, I know that a man cannot just come to you unless he be drawn. And if he be drawn, he has a repentant heart. Father, those men, they're my brothers. God, give them a heart of repentance so that they may come and see. And, and not my way, but your way, God, that your way is right. I ask you, Lord, forgive them and bring us together as brethren, Lord, so we can do your work. And now you there uh, that heard the message. And you want to meet this God that I've preached about. You want to meet the God that I've talked about. Come with me before him. Father God, these that will come before you today, you see them, God. You know their names. You know their locations. God, they, I hope that they're coming to you with a repentant heart. Oh, uh, friend, when you come before my God, you need to look at yourself. You need to look at your sin. And you need to ask God to forgive you and become godly sorry. And say, God, I'm sorry for what I did. Or maybe you did know. And just tell God to forgive you that you're sorry. Tell him that you want him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. He will. He said if he knock and you open, he, he'll come in and sup with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. My life has not been pleasing to you. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for the sin of my life, Lord. Forgive me for things that I knew and didn't know. Wash me and make me clean before you. And Jesus, I accept you right now. Ask my Lord and Savior. You are the Lord of my life. God, I don't know much about you. Uh, I maybe don't even know anything about you. But I ask you please to help me know more about you. Help me to understand who you are. Help me to understand that I need you and that I can't go without you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for those that have come. Friend, if you prayed that message... Let me be the first one to welcome you to the family of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are now a member of the family. You are now saved. Now, let me give you a bit of advice. Take 
his yoke. That means his word upon you and learn of him. What he's saying is take the book, take the doctrine and start to read it. I know, friend, uh, you won't be able to understand it. I, I know that. But if you ask him, he'll open it up for you. Friend, I couldn't read this thing. I used to get so frustrated because I couldn't understand the book. But when I turned my heart to him, I started reading and didn't even know I was understanding it. Because he took the blindness off my eyes. Hallelujah. Let me thank you all that have joined us. Thank you, son. I want to thank all of you that have joined us here on Facebook and then shortly YouTube. And before we go, allow me to give you the deaf clock. Amen. As of right now, at 12.37 p.m., a little over 12 hours, in the span of just over 12 hours, in the United States, there has been 3,920 deaths. Amen. They have gone into judgment. I don't know how many went where. Uh, but friend, I can be sure of this, that a large number have gone to the pit. Amen. That is sad and troubling news. Amen. Some that may have heard me last week are not here this week. Amen. Because they have gone into judgment. Some that had an opportunity to hear me or hear other preachers that are preaching the unadulterated truth. Amen. Have gone into judgment. Friend, I can leave here today and God could take me today. Amen. The same could be for you, my friend. Please take heed to yourself and to the life that you leave before him and ask God to forgive you and he'll walk with you. Again, thank you to all my friends and family members there on Facebook and to those that will soon view us on YouTube. Amen. And if I tried something new today. I tried to start a watch party. I don't know if it went through. If it didn't, I'm going to upload the regular message so forgive me if it didn't come out like it was supposed to amen i'm trying uh, to learn these things as i have time until next week at the same time that the lord be willing at 11 10 a.m be back to hear god's word amen and i tell you like i always tell you i won't change a word amen so long to all of you there Amen. Dante, you may take.